everybody, welcome to ChinFat. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you how to use the loop playback function. The loop playback function is found under the buttons that, down, that are down here under the program monitor. Uh, I'm not seeing it right now because by default, it does not have this feature. Uh, you can easily add it just by going over to the right hand side of your, uh, of your program monitor, click on the button editor, and you will find it right there. That's the loop play, that's the loop playback icon right there. You can grab it and customize your toolbar by just adding it right there at the beginning and there it is. So I hit okay and now I've got my loop playback. The loop playback feature is especially helpful for audio mixing. Uh, in this scene here on the, in this movie, we've got uh, this man that is woken up by his baby on the baby monitor crying. <laughs> Then here in a little bit, he gets up to go take care of the baby, but then all of a sudden, all right, he apparently hears the voice of his wife that starts to sing as if she's there in the in the room with the baby. So this one right here, with this audio here, this one has not been EQ'd yet. In the in the previous episode, I showed you how to add audio effects to the clips. So I'm going to add that same audio clip to this to make it sound like it's coming through the speaker because the baby does. If we listen, I'm going to solo this track and listen to the baby. This clip has a high pass filter on it. If I select this and look at the effect controls window and select the clip here, uh, that has a cutoff at 700 hertz. Everything below that, all the lower frequencies have been cut off to make it sound a little higher frequency and sound like it's coming through a speaker. So now if we listen to this, and then we listen to her voice, this one has not been added yet. So I'm gonna put this on the singing voice. I'm first of all going to copy and paste that high pass filter onto, the, onto these voices here. I'm going to copy and paste this onto one of those clips and start edit and start mixing it. I'm going to grab the high pass filter, hit command C or control C on a PC, move it over this clip and select it. And then do command v, v and drop it or control V on a PC. And then uh, now I have that exact filter pasted over. Uh, if I got this clip selected under the control panel, you see, I've got the high pass filter set of 700 Hertz. Now, if I want to alter that, what I can do is I can solo her voice. I'm going to solo her voice and turn off the solo on the baby voice. And what I want to do is I want to mix this live and see what sounds good and change the frequency live while I'm listening to her voice just so I can get this exactly where I need it. And this clip here not, may not be lengthy enough to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, so I'm going to select the clip and I've got the high pass filter here. As I play back, you can change the frequency while it is playing back live. Hush, little baby. And I'm just going to type in different numbers here. Don't say a word. 500. Mama's gonna and I can hear that change. And then 300. And then let's hear it change. And but now it edits and goes to the next clip. But I want to hear this clip over and over again until I get that frequency exactly where I want it. So I've got it soloed. I can go to the beginning of this clip here. I'm going to arrow up and land on that edit right there. Hit I for endpoint. Arrow down and jump to these edits and get to the very end of this clip here. And do O for out point. I am set an endpoint and outpoint on my timeline. Now all I have to do is make sure that my loop playback is highlighted, which it is. If you do that, it's no longer played. It's no longer highlighted. Watch what happens is it gets to the end of this outpoint. And if that it just keeps on playing uh, down the timeline. But if I do loop playback and put the playhead somewhere within this loop here, bird. Hush, little. Once it hits the end, it goes back to the endpoint and starts playing it again. And then once again, when it gets to the end, it will loop and go back again. And it will just keep doing that forever if you let it. But how this is helpful is now I can select the clip. I can have my effect controls open. There's my high pass filter right there. And now I can play this back and start changing these numbers. Watch this. I'm going to play. Hush, little baby, don't say a word. I'm going to do 600 gonna buy you and hit enter. And it plays a clip over again. And it keeps playing back until I get this right. I'm going to try 1,300. And that's too much. I'm going to try 800. Hit enter. And 800 seems about, like seven, around 700 to 800 sounds the best. Let's, let's see the difference between 700 and 800. Let's play this back. 700, return. And that sounds good. That sounds like it's coming through a speaker, but we still hear it clearly. It's not so high frequencies that, it, that it's tough to hear. And we've nailed it at 700 and that sounds good. So now I can clear my in and out points here, which is option X on a Mac and as control shift X on a PC will clear all those. Another way to do that is just right click up here 
and say clear in and out. We'll do the same thing. But once again, option X on a Mac, control shift X on a PC will clear those out. Now I can simply select this clip, go up and copy my high pass filter, select my high pass filter up here and do command C to copy or control C from a, on a PC. And I move it over the rest of, the, of her voice singing here to these next three clips right there. And now I'll hit command V as in Victor or as control V and it will paste it onto all those clips. And now you can see I've got the high pass filter set at 700 hertz. King bird, don't sing. And now it sounds like it's coming through the speaker. Now, if I turn off my solo, I've got the rest of my mix done with ambient room noise and everything else. And once I've got the solo turned off here, I play. Mama's gonna buy you a bird. And there you go. And this not only works with audio, but it works with video as well. I find that I don't need it as much on video because you can, if you're going to be doing color grading right now, I've got this uh, range under window and workspaces uh, for color. And, uh, and it gives us this panel on the side here and the effects panel over here, effect control panel. Like if you're trying to color grade a specific shot and you need to see it in motion, you usually don't. Usually on a clip, you just select it on a, on a keyframe like this with, uh, with his face into the shot there. And you can go up and just change your exposure, change your contrast and get and change your colors, whatever else you need to do to do, do your color grade. I'm going to reset that. But let's show you, this can be helpful if you need to color grade something and play it back while you're watching it. Select my timeline and go uh, up to this edit here and hit I for end point and go down to the end of the edit here and click O for out point. Now when I play this, it will loop back this section here. So as I press play, so now when I press play, you can start color grading this and it will and it will have a live representation of what is happening here. Here I'm changing just the exposure, and here I'm changing the contrast, and here I'm changing the color temperature. And you can see that it starts looping again when it gets to the end of the video. So if you're trying to color grade one clip and for some reason you do need to be watching it in motion while you're color grading, you can have the loop point play over and over again as well while you are color grading live with the sliders up here in the, in the, control, in the Lumetri color control panel. And then once again, option X to close the in and out points or control shift X on a PC, or you can simply right click up here and say clear in and out. And that's how to use the loop playback feature inside of Premiere Pro. Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, let me know.